Hi, welcome back to the Game Blocks tutorials. This tutorial discusses creating a space slash arcade shooter. Um, a lot of the the information has already been covered in the physics tutorial, so watch the first um, five minutes of that at least, and you you'll see how to create a ship here and make it rotate and make it loop around the sides. Maybe I'll review that at the very end of this video. Um, that'll get you set up. Um, you know, that was all there just kind of to show off the physics engine. And what I'm going to talk about here is just the mechanisms of shooting and interacting with other objects um, in this type of a game. So what we're going to do is um, create shooting bullets. And you know, in these games you want to shoot more than one bullet. You want to just bam, mash the button and, and shoot several bullets. So that's what we'll, we'll talk about in the block system, um, in this um, framework here uh, with sprites and everything. Uh, it's not quite so convenient to create multiple bullets um, in almost any other programming environment or game system. It's pretty straightforward to spawn a new copy of something. And there are commands for that within BYOB. Um, but, um, you know, I haven't delved into them deeply, but I, I think they actually create copies of the sprite over here. And, and I think that would just kind of mess up your, your sprite list over time. So what I've created is just a quick little mechanism here to to handle multiple bullets and it's it's not at all elegant at all but it, it could get you what you need if you just want to have the ability to shoot three or four bullets at a time so what we do is basically have to make these bullets um, under, understand if they're firing or not and t basically talk to each other so that another bullet can fire if uh, one's already out there um, so let's look at the variables here I've already kind of created the variables for this um, this bullet has just one variable it cares about basically which is whether it's firing or not so to create that we would go to make a variable it's just for the sprite no one else really cares about, about this information but this bullet and we just type in firing here for this sprite only and then that would show up right here as this variable and so let's just kind of put the script together at the start of the game um, we'll, do, we'll do a couple things uh, let's just have another one of these down here handy because we're going to need it in a minute. Um, at the start of the game, we basically want to make this bullet disappear. We don't want it to be on screen until you shoot. So we just put a hide here. And we also want to set that variable. We want to make sure that our firing variable is false because we know we're not firing. So always do a pull down to get the variable. Don't drag out into the slot. Somehow that doesn't work. We, would, we think it would the way it looks but it, it doesn't work so set firing to um, I'm just going to use the word just for the sake of readability we'll call it let's we'll say false so nothing's going on until it's time for us to fire and what we'll do is we'll actually wait for a, a message fire so we're going to catch the firing event here in the controlling the ship we'll put a, a script there that waits for the key to be pressed and then we'll just broadcast the notion of firing and then our, our bullets will handle that that message so we'll have to catch that event. So when I receive, and again, this has already been created. Look at the sluggish interface. I'm not quite sure why it gets this way. All right, so you go to new and type in the name of the command you wanted to, or the name of the event. What I typed was fire, fire two, and fire three. These will be used to talk to the other bullets if, if we're not able to, to fire this time. But we're just going to wait until we're being asked to fire. So when I receive fire, um, we want to do one of two things. If we're currently um, firing, we, we don't, we don't want to fire. But conversely, if we're not, then we do. So we, we have two cases to, to handle. So we'll do an if-else here. So basically, we're just checking equality here to see what our state is, if we're firing or not. So, oops, we're going to go to operators. So we should check whether we're equal to. Oh, let's get the variable in there before I type it up. If firing equals false. So basically, if we're not firing, we're going to do a bunch of stuff to get, um, get moving to, to fire ourselves. So if we're in this path, we're going to be setting ourselves up to fire. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we've set our firing state to firing, because that's what we're doing now. So we'll change it to true. And then um, 
we got to position ourselves where the ship is. The ship's going to be somewhere, and uh, we need to put the bullet where the ship is and get it going the right direction. So first thing we want to do is a go to. And this is pretty handy. Um, there's this go to command that will uh, put you at the location of an object. So we have the list of sprites here. It'll, you can put yourself where the mouse pointer is. But we'll uh, put us where the ship is. I didn't create this for the record. This is just part of BYOB and probably Scratch. So we're going to go to the location of the, the ship. And likewise, more standard um, Scratch blocks. We're going to point ourselves in a direction. We want to point ourselves in the direction of uh, the ship, what the ship is facing. And so this is one of the the only real tricky steps here. Um, you need to, we need to get that value off the ship. We need to, to know what direction it's facing. And the way you do that, there's a sensing block called attribute that lets you get an attribute of a sprite, you know, of another object in the system. So right here, exposition of alien, you know, blank of blank, basically. I'm going to point in, not a, the position of something, but we're going to point in the direction. So we're going to point in direction, you can get the costume number, size, volume, different things. So we're going to point in the direction of the ship. Okay, so this basically then means that when we send the glide command or a move command, we're going to move in the direction that we were shot. Um, and we're going to, it's putting us at the, at the center of the ship, it's going to put us right in the middle. So based on, you know, what your art looks like, you would then want to offset the position of the bullet. So we're going to go to, we're going to do a move. The move will offset us a certain number of pixels from where we are. So move. For this particular art, for the ship, it's about 40. It's a good place. And then we've set ourselves up. We're here, but we're not visible yet. So we want to show ourselves the world now that we're ready to, to be fired. And there we go. So we're actually we're actually ready to, to fly through the world now. Now the way um, I've set this up, you know, we could use the physics engine and, and give it a velocity and set up a physics loop on it and everything. Um, that it's probably more setup than we need. I think it's it's good to do simple things when you can. I think so. We're just going to give it a, a linear velocity, um, so we won't worry about the that using the physics for that type of thing. Um, you would do it the same way you would do other other physics. So if you really want to get into that kind of interaction, you can watch the physics tutorial and hopefully figure out how to do do that. Um, so let's see. So we're going to do some animation while we're firing. So to do that, this forever if is a pretty clean way to, to do some of these things that you, you do for the whole duration of the game. So forever if, and what we're going to check is if we're firing. So this will just kind of turn on and off based on the state of this firing variable. So we'll just quickly duplicate this bit of logic, stick it down there. Um, and basically if, we're fi if firing is true, firing is true, we're going to just keep moving forward. So we'll just move at some pace here. Move five steps. And we don't want to go forever. Uh, we would want to um, make ourselves disappear. Uh, when we collide, for sure, we'll do that in a second. But we also, if we hit the edge of the screen, we might as well disappear. That's what I'm thinking. If we could do it as a timer, we could be keeping a counter of how far we've moved if we wanted. Uh, but the easiest thing will be um, to do an if condition, whether we're touching the edge. So let's grab an if. So if <coughs> touching, and it's another little handy dandy trick. In addition to checking if you're touching another sprite, this is how you do collision conditions, right? Now you can check whether you're touching the edge of the screen. So if we're touching the edge, and we'll just do a quick broadcast, basically. Um, strictly wouldn't have to do this as a broadcast, I guess, but this is how I did the tutorial, so it doesn't hurt to let the system know what's going on. So we're going to say hide bullet. I think I did this for all three bullets. So. And again, you could 
probably get away with just putting the command in this block and save this complexity, but this way the rest of the system might know, might could do something if your port's um, finished. Alright, so broadcast hide bullet. Um, what this does is just kind of let you organize your code so then we can see you have a script over here for the termination of this interaction. So when the bullet is hot hid, we want to hide, of course. And we want to set our, our variable back to false. Just go ahead and we'll duplicate this piece of code here and stick it there. So there we go. So the bullet bullet will fly until it hits the edge and then it will uh, disappear. The only thing we haven't done is if, we, if we're already firing, so if firing is not false, if firing is true, we just want to tell the next bullet that maybe it should try to fire. So we do that with yet another message. And just, just like we wait for the fire message, the, uh, the other bullet will wait for the fire to message. Again, not the most ideal implementation, but for BYOB environment, this kind of seems to make the most sense. So let's uh, see if this works. It's a lot of code to write without testing. Um, let's see if we can shoot a bullet. Well, you know what? This, the fire message is already being sent from somewhere else. So I'll have to show you that so you can believe this all works. But you got to remember what key it is to fire something. There we go. So it actually, you can see the scripts light up. So it's still running. Um, you can see this one blink. It gets the fire message whenever I push a, a key. And it shoots the bullet. The bullet moves. You know, this turns true. This starts to move the bullet. And then you can see this blink briefly once it hits the edge. So that um, condition gets passed on. So there we go. So we have bullets. Um, and I do need to show how you trigger those. And this is similar to other um, interactions uh, shown in other tutorials where you just want to catch a key. Um, yeah, we should look at it. Let's let it uh, bring itself up. Mm -hmm. There we go. Not the speediest interface, unfortunately. Okay, so basically, this is where it's happening. When uh, the green flag is clicked, we just do a forever if. It's just basically doing what we were doing there for checking whether the state of the bullet was firing. It's just checking every frame, are we pressing W, are we pressing W, if the user presses W down, it broadcasts fire, waits 0.3 seconds, just it's a good policy for some of these interactions just to let the, the other blocks handle the message, get the bullet firing, set the state of, of the, the bullet, and then it'll start checking again, so that's still pretty fast to fire, that's three bullets per second, so you could tighten this if you needed to. So that's that's kind of it. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward how to set that up. Um, so there you go. So that, that the mechanism is basically set up. Let's look at what happens um, on bullet two. So you basically set up the same mechanism on each of the bullets you wanted to be in this uh, the multi-fire system. Well, I should have just clicked on bullet two first, shouldn't I? I wanted to show the full chain here. All right. So fire comes in. We do our setup to fire. But if we're already firing, we broadcast fire two. So we just ignore all of the stuff that's already going on. Bullet two is listening for fire two. And maybe it's it's not firing. So if it's not firing, you'll see um, what it does, which is should be this exactly the same as bullet one. So go. If I want to receive fire two, if firing equals false. And notice it can use the same variable name because um, we've set it up as a local variable. So each sprite has its own version of firing. And a handy dandy thing, so you do this once, right? You go through this tutorial, you build out this, this structure once. To duplicate on the next bullet over, you just drag it over and stick it on the, the sprite and let go. And that does not just moves the code over there, but it also creates this local variable for you. So you don't have to do that either. Um, so so there you go. So you can see how these chain together. Um, there's three of those. Okay. So the piece we haven't covered yet is handling collision of the bullet with an asteroid or an enemy. Um, we'll do a simple type of reaction to that, but let's show how to wire that up. 
so basically, um, what we want to do is um, have some kind of a check to see if one sprite is touching another sprite. And we have you know collision a collision system in the physics blocks that handles actual you know reactions where it, it'll change the velocity of, of a target when you have a collision. This is more of a game interaction. We just want to know that the collisions happen, and then we'll take the action uh, to do something like make the asteroid crumble or make it explode or whatever. So typically, I find it's can be most convenient to put the script on the target. You know, so that bullet our bullet may hit any of five things and it may do something different based on what it's hitting. You know, it may power something up or it may make something crumble, may some, make something explode. So if you put the logic in the object itself then um, you can take a specific action for that. So here's how um, I've set it up for this game. Basically we're in the alien and if you've seen the physics tutorial there's a whole bunch of stuff we do here for um, bouncing around and stuff for physics. But here's the loop to catch the collisions with the bullet. It's basically, let's just look at one of them, we can pull these other two away for a second. Um, basically just, it's got a forever loop, and there's a bunch of ifs here, so that's why we're not doing forever if we're doing several different checks. So every frame, every time the game redraws, every split second, it checks, am I touching bullet one? And again, to get touching, it's this first command here, you just drag it out and do the, do the pull down to pick your sprite you want to select. So if I'm touching bullet one, uh, we're, we do these me messages and you know I didn't remember why I did this before but now I do. We broke out the hiding command so that we can hide the bullet from here. So we can hide bullet one just by calling this uh, message, sending that message. Uh, and we're going to broadcast a message for the alien being hit. So we're talking to ourselves here. We're the alien and we're sending a broadcast message to us to keep the code clean. Because you notice we have three different bullets we might crash into. We don't want to have to put the code for being hit in all three places. So we're going to send a message to ourselves to execute um, uh, a change when we get hit. And then, you know, a split second wait, just, I don't know, for good measure. Just when you're sending messages around, it's good to kind of let the action that you triggered finish before you do more logic. So when we're hit, that's pretty simple. When I receive alien hit, and I've shown, shown this many, many times but once again you can just pull this out of the the control blocks um, yeah so when I receive alien hit next costume oh that's just a simple command that's just going to switch the costume that we're showing you know our background or our, our image right out of here from look so let's just see what happens when we shoot the alien you should see this one light up when the bullet collides so see this is lit up it's checking every frame to see if bullet one two or three is collided with with it. And let's see. There we go. And the costume changes when he gets hit. So you can still collide with him. You can collide with his hair too, which is kind of a nice thing that just comes with uh, Scratch and BYOB per pixel collisions. And, uh, and you can keep shooting him. And that, that wraps up the tutorial for creating a space shooter. Um, good luck.